Court will now reconvene. I assume both sides are ready? Yes, Your Honor. Yes, Your Honor. Oh, Edgeworth. <laughs> Did you get some bad news? <laughs> I can understand the defense acting like this. However, why do you also seem distraught, Mr. Edgeworth? Uh, I... Heartburn. That is... Some bad food. <laughs> Vision fading. Knees weak. Arms heavy. Arms sweaty. Mom's spaghetti. It's nothing, Your Honor. What's wrong with Edgeworth? looks like something unexpected just happened to him. Now then, Mr. Edgeworth, if you could please tell the court the results of the handwriting analysis on Miss Impax's suicide note. Yes, Your Honor. Unfortunately, we have discovered that the suicide note is a forgery. Oh, shit. Wait, what? what? What do you mean, Mr. Edgeworth? This... This note was not written by Miss Impax herself. It is a fake. Oh, shit. <clears throat> I do not remember this twist. <laughs> Order! 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 I played this game before, so I just didn't know. I just wasn't expecting that. <laughs> <laughs> Would you care to explain what is going on? Well, this it's was not a written by Miss Inpa <laughs> If this was not written by Miss Impax, then who wrote it? We would need more time to do a more detailed yeah, just, analysis. Yeah, just because she did it right doesn't mean we now know who did. We didn't yeah. analyze everyone's handwriting. Yeah. <laughs> However, it appears that the handwriting matches oh, that okay. well, we did. Mr. Juan Carita. There we go. Okay. <laughs> I guess that is the second person you checked. Oh, yeah. yeah Mr. Karita? Oh, well. It looks like Miss Impacts never left a suicide note after all. She never wrote anything about on guard. However, Your Honor, even though this suicide note is indeed a fake, Everything in it is true. <laughs> Mr. Ungard could not have known that, and so the facts remain unchanged. Acting under the assumption that it was real, he had plotted to possess it. Hmm. Uh, that does sound very plausible. This... Damn it. You, this... Just, you just contradicted yourself. This theory that Edgeworth... Uh, that Ungard had no idea that the suicide note was fake... Something seems a little wrong with it. Oh yeah, we, we know he was spying on him. <clears throat> wait, 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 sorry. The what we're trying to say is what? He's like, oh, that on guard had no idea it was a fake note, but Edgeworth was like, well, he knew yeah. about the note because yeah. he because literally he saw everything yeah, yeah. he did. The defense believes that the theory the prosecution has stated contradicts testimony. If everything the prosecution has proven up until this point is true, then it's impossible for Mr. Ungard to not have known it was a fake. It's... Spy camera. Spy camera! Yeah. What is this little item called again? Judge. Um, hey, it was, over 30, it was over 30 minutes ago. Yeah, give him a break. That's true, that's a long time for the judge. A uh, video camera, Your Honor. Well, a very small one, but... Yeah, my, my grandpa forgets my name sometimes. It's all right. <laughs> oh, that's right. A camera. <laughs> what? You kids and your fancy toys nowadays. Mr. Edgeworth, earlier you claimed that Mr. Ungard knew okay, of the existence boomer. of this note. Yeah, literally. Because he was spying on the victim. Isn't that right? What was the generation before boomers? Was that the greatest uh. generation? I think it yeah, is. Yeah, because they were they were the post they were the World War II people, right? Okay, greatest generation. There's a there's a different <laughs> name, but they prefer to be called the greatest generation. Yeah. Because why yeah. wouldn't you? I mean, if you were members of yeah. that, that's what you'd want to be called. Yeah. <laughs> but if that were true, then this means Mr. Engar would have known that the victim had forged the note. Yeah. Unless, unless he forged it. 
at his own house or yeah. someplace and Darwin wasn't scarring out. This, this well, Etra exactly said he found it. Logic. Etra said he said he found a spy camera at. Uh, oh no, that was at on guard's house. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> I would be shocked sense. if these guys had spy cameras in each other's houses. <laughs> That'd be kind of buck wild. Yeah. So then the defendant knew the suicide note was a fake. And if that's true, then the situation has suddenly changed in a very dramatic way. Exactly, Your Honor. The prosecution's theory as to what as to, as to what Mr. Engard's motive for murder was, it has suddenly disappeared into thin air. But Your Honor. It's not as if Mr. Ungard monitored Mr. Karina 24 hours a day. Perhaps the victim wrote the note in a place Mr. Ungard didn't know of. Well, right back at you, Mr. Edgeworth. Why don't you show us some of the proof that the victim made the forgery at an unknown place? <laughs> that feels like the only time in this game where they let you actually do that to the, the prosecution and they, like, uh -huh. accept it. This <laughs> is just... He's... Turn him, if this is this is truly the turnabout. Yeah. <laughs> where, where Phoenix demands that everything be proven by evidence. <laughs> Order. 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 Mr. Edgeworth. It looks like this time it is you who has dug his own grave. Uh, as I figured. I don't know if he dug his own grave, but like... <laughs> ah. As you figured... As I figured, it came down to this after all. Mr. Edgeworth, you're not making any sense. Bloop, bleep, 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 schmoop, bleep, bleep, bleep. now you're really not making any sense. <laughs> Have you heard of the Lolly Lule Lo? <laughs> the Lolly Lule Lo? <laughs> Metal Gear? No, the Patriots, Your Honor. The Patriots? <laughs> When I heard the results of the handwriting analysis, I thought this might happen. The question is, what next? What next? If the prosecution can't prove Mr. Ongard's motive through the evidence, then we must prove it from another angle. Well, I agree with you there. Your Honor, the prosecution... Would like to call a spirit medium to the <gasps> stand. The prosecution would like to call a witness to the stand at this time. Oh, well, that's fine. However, this witness, this witness is a little unusual. It's a parrot. Oh, no, we've done that before. Oh, Edge that's very usual. Edgeworth stuttering. This is not like him at all. Unusual? Well, what sort of witness is this Is this person, Mr. Edgeworth? This witness is one who is perfectly fit to answer once and for all the question of who was it that hired Shelley to kill her to commit murder? That's impossible. Who in the... No such person exists, and uh, no such person exists who can answer that question with such certainty. Yes, Mr. Edgeworth, who is this witness? It is, it's, um, yes, go on, who is it? The man himself, Mr. Shelley DeKiller. Oh, Mr. DeKiller. <laughs> oh, yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> Wait, Shelley DeKiller? They really did the, like, the classic cartoon bit there. That's They're good. Like, oh, yeah, that guy. <laughs> Ah, uh, you mean the killer? Uh, I mean, the assassin? <clears throat> yes, Your Honor. He's coming here to do the witness stand? To kill me? Well, to kill me? <laughs> <laughs> He'll be Shelley to witness? <laughs> well, yes, in a manner of speaking. I recognize that this is a very unusual circumstance, so I ask for your permission. Uh, well, Mr. Wright? Yes? Is this all right with you? Do I have a choice here? 
Uh, I can't really do much else to drag this trial out. The defense has no objections, Your Honor. I wonder if it really is all right to do this. Very well, then. The prosecution calls our witness to the stand. Edgeworth, is there no other way left to us? Now then, witness. Um, your name and <laughs> your, uh, occupation, please. Oh my gosh, Shelly the Killer's a robot! <laughs> <laughs> I didn't realize he was a robot. <laughs> See, I really... Well, <laughs> It would be really funny, though, if there was just some random person with a badly, like, done makeup job making them look like Shelly the Killer. Yeah. Literally just, like, like, like a, a fucking, like, zipper hanging, like, holding up a zipper above his head to, like... Yeah, just, it's just one of the bailiffs, like, dressed up with a really, like, bad, like, zipper tape to his face. <laughs> yeah, it's Al uh, me, Shelly the Killer. I, I know who hired me. Ooh. <laughs> Well, he had piercing red eyes, metal pincers for hands, and he ran on batteries. <laughs> uh, and Val Doodle shared five more bits saying, how do they manage to fit him in that small radio? <laughs> Good question. Oh, no. it's He's an animatronic, and he got scooped. No. no. I've made a Freddy's reference. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> God damn it. The, the new punky counter is, can we make five, five nights? Can we make five Five Nights at Freddy references per oh, episode? Oh, Jesus, God. <laughs> Shit. The new punky counter. Shit, speaking of punky counters, I, I think I've only made one so far. It's all right. You've died once. You can die again. <sighs> oh, boy. I just got to dial it in. Hey, uh, that works. There you go. There it is. Very good, sir. My name is Shelley Dekilla. And I am a professional assassin. I do love when they try to give the radio and like a little an animation. Face yeah, yeah, yeah. And make it, an yeah. make it animated too. So it, yeah. It the radio like has some really good animations. It's cute. <laughs> it's, a, it's a nice little touch. Mm -hmm. Uh huh. I say, what is going on here? This radio kills people? It killed the radio it, star. It, it killed the damn it. Yes. Oh no. <laughs> we both went for it. <laughs> radio killed the radio star. It's a fucking banger. Radio killed the Your radio Honor. star. How can you remain so calm? What is the meaning of this two-way radio? Actually, Your Honor, it was delivered to me just now. And it came with a condition. As long as we do not trace its source, Mr. De Killer will testify to this court. So this must be what that urgent phone call he got earlier was about. Trace the source. Oh. He, he literally won't be able to know. It's a yeah, radio. It's, it's, come he on. won't be able to tell. <laughs> trace the damn source. Oh, no, this will not do. I cannot allow this in my court. First of all, we can't even be sure this is really Mr. De Killer himself. Witness, please present some sort of proof. But you're, in fact, Shelley Dekilla. And just then, like, a little red light, like, shows up on the judge's forehead. <laughs> <laughs> I understand. Please, wait a second. Mom, could you say something? <laughs> What's that, dear? Could you tell them that I'm Dekilla? Oh, yeah, hello, my boy is such a... Bright young man, so good at killing. Thank you, Mom. I'm so hungry. Maya! Burgers. Maya! A, a voice. Mr. Wright, can you confirm anything from this? The defense has no objections to this person. We are satisfied that this man is indeed Shelley the Killer. It looks like we have run into yet another unexpected turn of events. All right, guys, we don't have to touch on this, but uh, this one fly to actual court. Big, big surprise, right? Yeah. <laughs> Wait, really? <laughs> really? I feel oh, like man, I really don't I need this to belabor this would point. Do it. <laughs> well, also, I like how I guess everyone just knows that an assassin has kidnapped our assistant. And 
Oh, Everyone yeah. just knows this now. It's the th it's the weird thing where like I get that they just they want to like skirt around it to not waste so much time on it, but the judge just was like, I can't let this happen, Mister Wright. Do you do you agree to this? And he's like, Oh no, he's the dude. Let's yeah, let's do it. And the judge is like, Okay, fine. I guess if you said it. Yeah, we all know this judge <laughs> doesn't actually run his courtroom. The lawyers do. Yeah, that's true. true. I I would love the idea of like, while while in the middle of like. To killer's testimony all of a sudden we just hear like the door burst down and, and gumshoes in the background like i got gotcha, you pal it's you and me <laughs> oh fuck <laughs> well it doesn't seem like we have too many choices under these circumstances so it's not like i can you know suspend proceedings until tomorrow now then witness there is one thing I would like to confirm before we speak of anything else. And what would that be? At the request of a client, you killed Mr. Von Corita. Is this correct? It is. As you say, I did indeed kill Mr. Corita. Hello? Now that we have answered that, let's move on to the name of your client. Very well. This is all just a bad dream. It's such a bad dream. Shelly the Killer. What is he going to say? Well, probably not man on guard. Uh, and Uber Super Sloth cheered 5-bit saying, which is more realistic as a witness, this or the parrot? I mean, this is at least a human being. Yeah. So, right. I guess. Yeah. I guess at least, I don't know. I guess we know that parrot is that parrot. That's so, true. Yeah. It's like, Anna, what's more important to you? Knowing that the person testifying is actually that person or it being that a person? That they can communicate. Yeah. <laughs> they're, they're both just absolute kangaroo courts, but. Yeah. By that um, logic, what's better, this or a rock? I mean, it depends on it depends on what well, that rock is. Well, the rock is not the rock is not sent. That's if, true. If, if, but what if that rock was Boldy from the hit game Hades by Supergiant Games? Well, that rock is. I was awesome, going to say so. if we if we smell what if we smell what that rock is cooking, then maybe. <laughs> Seth, does the killer have glasses? I think he does. And now that you said it, I have no idea. Uh, I know. I haven't like looked at his face record? in forever. Oh yeah, we could probably uh, just do that. Oh, he has a, he has a monocle. That's right. I was gonna say, does he have a monocle? Oh, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah he's got oh, a monocle. Yeah, the... I love that we have both of them. John Doe <laughs> and Shelly. Yeah, they look it. exactly the same. Wow, it's wild. It's almost like they're the same person. <laughs> also, for, also, for all we know, the monocle's fake too. That's true. <laughs> That's true. It could be just it could just be part of the Bellboy Butler getup. Oh, it could be completely fake. That was really funny. <clears throat> I mean, I feel was... like you. I, I feel like as an assassin, you wouldn't want. A monocle. It's not like no. You, you just I want feel like as a human being, you wouldn't want a monocle. <laughs> Let's be clear. I mean, hey, man, monocles can be kind of dope looking. It's a fashion statement, but fuck, it's such a pain in the ass to keep in your eye. Uh, exactly. Yes, hundred percent. I right. played a I played a character in a play once who had one, and it fucking sucked. <laughs> now, did you actually have to like hold it up? Like, did it actually try and like hold it in your eye, or did you just have it like attached to a rope in your pocket? That you oh no! I mean, her? like, well, I made the choice of like constantly having it in my eye, and then like every now and then, like god. I would take it off to like wipe it with my shirt. To, oh god! Like, to and that's where Zach's signature eye twitch comes from. Yeah, <laughs> that's why. That's why my my muscles in my right eye are so much stronger. <laughs> there is something I must first state. To an assassin, nothing is more important than the trust between a client and himself. And that is the reason I am here today on this witness stand. It is my wish that you grasp this concept before I give the name of my client. Also, hold up, real quick. Shadako just said, Zach, you put a monocle on your eye, not in it. You know what I fucking meant, Shadako. <laughs> <laughs> Jams a piece of glass not, into his it's eye. It's not a contact. I wear contacts gonna... every day. It's not a contact. I know that. <laughs> Toby, Toby McGuire shows up and says, "I'm going to put some. I'm going to put some glass in your eye." <laughs> Mister the Killer seems to be a very clever man. 
I'd almost say he seems to be mocking us. Na 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 na, boo boo. <laughs> well, he may appear to be our enemy, Your Honor. Mr. the Killer is only stating the truth. What? <laughs> what? He is no hypocrite. He has always stood by this one belief. You mean about this trust between his client and himself thing? Uh, there seems to be a level of trust beyond what people like me can comprehend. <laughs> well, Mr. Wright, are you ready to cross-examine the witness? Yes, Your Honor. There's no way to know what's coming next. So stay cool and collected, Phoenix. Like a cucumber. <clears throat> Bakumba. <sighs> I actually forgot completely what you said here. It's so, so, so my wish that you grasp this concept before I give the name of my class. Oh, okay. Well, I guess, yeah, we probably just press everything. <laughs> we can hear anything you have to say later. Can you please just tell us your clients? I don't think you understand your place, Mr. Attorney. I said this is something I must first state. Do you know what the word first means? God damn it. S sorry. Go on. Well, it appears this is one witness you can't badger, Mr. Wright. Judge, like, act like I'm a fucking asshole. That's only because you don't know about Maya's situation. The trust between you and your client. I provide my services in a fast and efficient manner. In exchange, I trust that my clients are discreet about me and my identity. If too many people knew my face, it would be quite troublesome. And that is why you're testifying in this manner? This is the first time one of my clients has ever been accused of murder. I must preserve the De Killer name so my clients can trust me. But couldn't someone stab you in the back and break your trust? It has never happened before. But if it ever did... <laughs> yes? That person wouldn't be my client for very long. Oh, it's kind of funny. It'd be a shame if this person tried to blackmail you. <laughs> they would certainly... That's enough! Please, no more! Very well. It was only a hypothetical, anyway. Hypothetically. If my client was to backstab me. Hypothetically. Let's say my client was to, back <laughs> was to betray you. <clears throat> That seems a little strange to me. I mean, you're about to tell us the name of your client. I would think that this would be very bad for them. It doesn't matter to me. This client has already broken the rules and acted outside of their prescribed role. Their role? This person tried to implicate another of the crime in order to save themselves. And this is a trespass that cannot be forgiven. You, who gave you the right to be so high and mighty? To the gentleman who spoke just now, excuse me, <laughs> would you care to die? <laughs> uh, no, no, I, I, I didn't say anything. The judge had better watch himself. <laughs> Yo, who said that? I will fucking <laughs> Yeah, it's all, seriously, it's just the red light just shows up on the judge's that forehead. Who said that? Damn, I wish I wish that that was a, a factor, because that would be really funny. <laughs> uh, we understand. So please tell us the name of your client. I'm afraid I cannot do that. What? I still have a few things to say before I do. Ah, <laughs> uh, that egomaniacal... It's not good for your health to be so aggravated. You won't live very long if you let everything bother you. Somehow, 
That coming from an assassin makes it less than comforting. I don't really care about all this extra fluff. Just tell us his name already. Patience. Try to calm down a little. It's important to try and understand his mindset. He seems very steadfast and closed, so you're gonna have to go you're gonna have to work to get him to talk. I'm not his therapist, you know. <laughs> God damn it, Mia, I'm a lawyer, not a therapist. <laughs> uh I have do, been the, looking second, for do a good the second therapist, one again. So I like I like the idea that he's like, now uh I will tell you my client, but I am going to say a few more things first. Uh like I'm done. <laughs> like uh 911 was an inside job and <laughs> <laughs> objection i won't tell you if you don't let me speak <laughs> uh... the trust between you and your client i do this uh yeah i think skip forward a little bit i can't skip uh, yeah, i just read about my me and my identity these are the roles and duties an assassin and his client are to carry out I'm sorry, but I was just wondering about something you said. You said that your client had already broken the rules. A person who frames another is the worst kind of human. I mean... Maybe eh, the, the worst? The worst. <laughs> eh. I don't know. I think it's the person who, who, who cuts me off without using a turn signal. <laughs> Now that's yeah, the that's, worst that's, kind that's of got a pretty person. good point there. <laughs> Fuck them. <laughs> and that's why you feel you can betray this person. I have no trust relation with a client who can't understand their assigned role. Just my luck. An assassin with a conscience. Who'd have figured? <laughs> <laughs> now then, everyone. Do you think you can understand my logic? This case just keeps getting better and better. Yeah. If you can't, then I'm afraid we can't proceed. Everyone understands your point, I think. Really. In that case, you should buy my book. <laughs> I believe I am prepared to disclose the information you seek. You have made it crystal clear that you have that you value trust over all else. I believe we are ready. Excellent. Uh, all right, there you go. Nice. Giant penguin cheer, or giant penguin says a person who frames another is the worst kind of person. I worked at a print shop. Does that mean make me the worst kind of person? <laughs> <laughs> That's fucking good. Yes. People who put anything in frames. <laughs> <laughs> and it's time to reload the time of my client. Great. What is it? Um, now I can't bring myself to ask the client's real name. If you can't ask it, Mr. Wright, then I will. Witness. What is the name of your client who requested the murder of Mr. Juan Carida? That person's name is... Wendy Oldbag. Oh, crap. Thank you. Ga, ga, ga. Adrian Andrews. Oh, so that's a huge-ass fucking radio, like, realistically. <laughs> <laughs> that's a damn boombox. What? what? Witness. That's not who you told me it was earlier. Uh. Pray tell, what are you talking about, <laughs> Mr. Prosecutor? I should think I know my own client, and it is Adrian Andrews. What? This can't be on the phone earlier. What's going on here? My guess is that Mr. The Killer just stabbed Mr. Edgeworth in the back. Stabbed Mr. Edgeworth in the back? Ah! My back! But that's oh, no, what I do! I'm throbbing with pain! Edgeworth, are you I've okay? I've stabbed in it! Let me take off your shirt so I can look at your back! Stabbed him in the back, but that's what I do every Friday night. 
Hey. <laughs> oh no. I'm sure in order to get an audience with this court, Mr. De Killer told him a different name. Matt on guard, perhaps? I knew it. This, this is outrageous. I was deceived. This witness is telling a very serious lie. Also, but here's the problem. If Edgeworth thought he was going to say Matt on guard, why would he still ask him to tell that right now? Because that would instantly implicate Matt on guard and result in the case ending again. I, I, it was Matt on guard. Oh, also, I need to kill this girl now. Yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, also, yeah, if, if he says Matt on guard, it means Matt on guard's going to get found guilty, and then he's going to kill Maya. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. Edward didn't really think this went through. Yeah, <laughs> this witness is telling a very outrageous lie. But you were the one who summoned this witness. <laughs> Girk! You, Shelley the Killer. My testimony is the truth. The defendant at the moment is Matt on guard. Am I correct? All I wish to do is to help procure his acquittal. Eh. Eh. Hmm. Wow. Wow. <laughs> wow. 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 All of a sudden, it feels like we can actually win this. Yeah. Wait, but do we want, like, what are we trying to do here? <laughs> The prosecution has failed to provide a motive and has instead provided this suicide note, which is a forgery created by the victim. Furthermore, there is a possibility the defendant himself knew it was a fake. But most definitive of all, we have heard from the assassin himself the name of his client. We Mr. have Killer's decided client. to believe for reasons. <laughs> Mr. DeKiller's client who requested the murder was not the defendant at all. Oh. With all this evidence, it is obvious to me that this means that Mr. Matt on guard is refreshing like a spring breeze. <laughs> I seem to have caused you all a bit of confusion. Please, continue your discussion. And call me when you have reached a verdict. Aleph, please bring in Miss Andrews. Uh, please bring Miss Adrian Andrews in immediately. Oh, uh, Your Honor, she doesn't have a pee pee. What do I do? <laughs> God damn it. Improvise, man. <laughs> now, the way this is going, a guard will be found innocent. This may be our last chance. To save Maya. Yeah. But. But Edgeworth is right. The killer is lying. And in guard, my client, I know he's guilty. Can I live with myself if I win this? Who would have believed that the prosecution's own witness would absolve the defendant? Your Honor, the prosecution requests permission to further question the witness. Shelly the Killer is certainly lying under oath. Y'all don't believe under oath in this game. Y'all yeah. have him start talking. Yeah, literally. <laughs> it oh. wasn't me. Listen, everyone, please. That testimony just now, it was all one big lie. Miss Andrews. The suicide note may have been a fake, but that man, Matt, he's the reason Celeste died. Juan's death. It was all because he got pulled into Matt's twisted world. That testimony just now. You have to believe me. It was a horrible, horrible lie. But Mr. DeKiller himself has testified. He has named you as his client. No, that's not true. Also, there is quite a bit of evidence that points to you. Knife in the button, donning the Nickel Samurai's costume. That's... that's... We even have a motive. We know that Miss Celeste Impacts was a large part of your life. 
You wanted to follow her, and you wanted revenge against the two who hurt her. Juan and the trampoline. I would say you have plenty of reasons to want them both dead. No. Mr. Wright. You, you know the truth. Tell them. Tell them the real story. Who the real killer is. Tell them. Please. Help me. Yes. I know the truth. Mr. Wright. Yes, Your Honor. I believe we have reached the end of this trial. Judge, that's like the 17th time you've said that today. <laughs> you really <laughs> think you have? Therefore, I ask the defense for any final words or opinions. I have to decide. Do I take the not guilty verdict and save Maya? Or do I throw this chance away and wait for Gumshoe's new evidence? What am I supposed to do? Oh, bo -bo -bo -bo. So is, I think this, this is, is this is a great is, point to save stage. Yeah. yeah, this if there's a bad ending point, I feel like it's if we actually like, wait a verdict. minute. Uh, no, this isn't it. Really? Yeah, this isn't it. It's it's not uh, it's not here. Oh, okay. Well, shit. I'm pretty. I'm pretty. It's not. It's not. It's not yet. Well, you're safe state anyway, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So what happens if you hit it's... request the verdict, then? Oh, you can try. Let's see, yeah. Your Honor, the defense will make a request. Uh, he's like, I can't do it. It's no use. I can't. Yeah, <laughs> it feels like I've lost my voice. All right, fake, fake choice. I can't do it, Mia. Phoenix. I can't accept the not guilty. You, you are a lawyer. Get your ass back in there. I know. <laughs> But, but Madame Guard is a killer, a murderer. That was that was a fantastic line reading by the both of us. I can't let him get away with this. You are a lawyer. I, I know. A, and he's a killer. I can't let someone else take the fall. If I let Miss yeah, Andrews we'll be convicted, that. then I am no better than a guard. And even though I don't want well, to admit, yeah, well, that's not. True. Yeah, that's a bit. That's a bit bold. That seems like a false moral equivalence. I have to face the facts. It is because of Edgeworth that I now know the real truth. He could have gotten and, in guard convicted so many times over. But he I mean, never... he really kind of tried and then it's... left it up to you to, yeah, to not yeah. get make that happen. He never took a yeah, single one of those chances. Give him a little too much credit here. He, he Actually, he did. He definitely was like, well, Your Honor, it's time to end the trial now. Yeah. I've won. I win. If I take this verdict right now, I'd be betraying his trust. And his trust. Trust? I never thought about his, it until now. His thrust. Have you thought about how weird that <laughs> word is when you like see it spelled out, spelled out that much? I trust. I trust, trust. him. I love him. <laughs> I love him. You do. <laughs> Mr. Wright. What are we doing? I got. I forgot what we were doing. Opinion, please. <laughs> the defense. The defense requests that we be. be Blah. The defense requests that we be allowed to <laughs> uh -huh. further question Mr. DeKiller. I mean, what if he doesn't want to talk to you anymore? <laughs> <laughs> Am I hearing you correctly, Mr. Wright? Wait, sorry, I didn't have my hearing aid turned up. Okay, <laughs> say that one more time. Right. Do you trust me? <laughs> but, but that witness has cleared your client through his testimony. Your job here is done. I'm not done yet. To see through this witness's lies and to find the truth. That is my job, Your Honor. Except it's not. <laughs> your job is to vigorously represent the interests of your client. So nope, it's not your job. There's still more <laughs> evidence to look at. And I'm sure that once those pieces arrive here in this very courtroom, a miracle will occur. <laughs> Very well. The trial will continue. <laughs> well, I oh, fucking hate both of you. Like, ah, I'm gonna fucking miss Edward. happy hour. Please reestablish connection with Mr. DeKiller. <laughs> you like Mr. DeKiller? Your Honor. 
I don't want to talk to you no more. <laughs> Has a verdict been reached? Before that, we would like to talk with you a little more. Uh, no. Nope. What, what stops us from lying and being like, oh yeah, dude, Adrian's super guilty. She's getting led with handcuffs right now. Yep. Yeah, I know, right? About all you needed from me was the name of my client. What else could you need me for? What's your favorite color? Death. <laughs> <laughs> Well, actually, we would like to hear everything you know about this case. That's so much. That is how things are usually done. What is he talking also, where about? where are you right now? Usually done? But what shall we have him testify about now? Mr. DeKiller, if you don't mind, please testify about your client in more detail. Are you more of a tits or an ass guy? <laughs> I got nothing here, guy, Mr. Stalin. <laughs> you legal people and your procedures. Is it any wonder no one likes to go to court? Dude, you're a killer. No, like, I'm not going to tell you that your job sucks. But nobody likes to be killed. <laughs> uh, Mondays, am I right? <laughs> oh, my God. Shelly the killer is Garfield! I was about to say that, god damn it. <laughs> Valdir is furiously I... scribbling. Hurry! Someone put a plate of lasagna under a box with a stick and some string. <laughs> <laughs> That's how we'll capture him. As I have already stated quite a few times, Adrian Andrews is my client. However, one thing I simply cannot overlook is tampering with the scene of the crime. My client did it to frame another for the crime. While pretending to be the first person to discover the body and enter the scene, Adrian Andrews already knew from the very beginning that Juan Carita was dead. But even more appalling is the creation and planting of the knife and button. That act is what I was referring to when I said my client had broken rules. Hmm. This is a most unexpected turn of events for the uh, fifth time now. However, this time, everything has finally been revealed for the fifth time. <laughs> just a second, Your Honor. I feel like the judge is just going to retire after this case. <laughs> uh, trust me, I am a head out. <laughs> yes, Mr. Edgeworth. <laughs> we still have the cross-examination to do. But you don't need to question testimony like this. Do you, Mr. Wright? Your Honor, the defense will question the witness. As if I have a choice here. Huh? Why? What this witness has said is nothing but beneficial to the defense's case. If you scrutinize the testimony, then... Then I'll expose the lies in that oh-so-beneficial testimony, I suppose. I don't understand what's going on anymore. That makes two of us. Hmm. Uh, I feel like we need to focus on the stuff that's like the rules that he's not cool with because we need to be like, hey, Matt on Guard filmed you, dog. You're caught in 4K. I need tiny P, baby. <laughs> I would think that most people wouldn't be able to overlook a person hiring another to kill. If I had a problem with such a thing, I wouldn't be very effective at my All right, point. I'll kill this guy for you, but I really don't approve of you asking me to do this. <laughs> uh, yeah. Well, you really changed... shouldn't ask people to kill for you, but I'll do it anyway. Guy's got to make a living. 
A change in occupation might be good for you. However, I will say this. Even though I am the one that does the deed, my clients are always the real guilty party. Well, that goes without saying, Mr. De Killer. And their fate is to live with the knowledge of their guilt on their shoulders. However, my client this time thought that they could run away from their guilt. Are you talking about the button and the knife? Yes, and my business card. Oh, this card. So that no one has to waste their time, including the police. <clears throat> I always make it a point to make things as easy as possible. You try to make things easy? My business card makes it very easy to identify who carried out the service. He's pretty devoted to his work. But to disregard everything. To go and stab the deceased with a knife. And even hide my card from sight. That is something I cannot overlook. Mm -hmm. It's really hard to tell if he's being truthful or not without him being here. But Phoenix, we know that he's lying. <laughs> what the fuck <laughs> are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> what are you talking about? So, you're saying that most clients wouldn't do such a thing? That is correct. Usually, most people try to create an alibi for themselves. If you should use my services, Mr. Attorney, I would suggest you plan for your alibi, too. Uh, no, I already told you. I have no intention of ever using your services. I already told you. Why does he keep looking at me like I'm the one on trial here? <laughs> From the very beginning. That is correct. From before my client visited the room. All of my clients know precisely what the situation is at all times. I wonder if it's really true. That's odd. Hmm? Oh, I bet there's something there. Uh. Chat saying I missed a line of dialogue? Oh, I'll go back and get it then. So, why do you think your client did that? What do you mean by why? Well, fiddling around at the scene of the crime is pretty risky. And why would someone who has requested a murder go to the, the go to the crime scene anyway? Hmm, that, that is true. I assume it was probably done to frame Mr. Ungard. If that's the case, then why didn't the person just request that you did it? Sadly, that is not possible. Huh? My job is to kill. That is all. And to leave my business card behind, naturally. The business card is so my clients may escape blame. To protect them is my duty. Hmm. Even if they say it's for revenge, setting someone else up to take your fall. I already see it quite a few times. He's going to use my client. However, okay. <clears throat> What is it, Mr. Wright? If I press him the wrong way, it might raise suspicions on his end. But I have to do something to waste more time. Um, witness, about requesting a hit. Yes. How much is your fee? <laughs> I see you are also quite a dark-hearted man, Mr. Wright. Let me tell you, I have this absolute D-bag old friend of mine named Larry. Huh? I just want to get rid of that. <laughs> Well, if you look on the back of my business card, you'll find a QR code. Scan it, <laughs> and you can download my app. <laughs> if you would like to talk business, you can do so after the trial. Uh, no, no, no! I'm not thinking of hiring... Mr. Wright! Yes? You... 
You want to kill me? <laughs> you want me dead, don't you? What? Why would you think something like that, Your Honor? Guilty! <laughs> Mr. Phoenix Wright, you are hereby declared guilty! Bad end. Witness, let's continue. Why did you disclose the name of your client? They are your okay. client, are they not? Fast forwarding. That's good, that's good. Uh, we already did that one. Uh, yeah. I don't know if we did this one. I think it's fast forward to it. If not. We might have. No, we did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm sure it was something where, the one where Edgeworth said, that's strange. I'm sure there's something uh -huh. there. Which I think was the one before this. This is the last one, I think. Yeah. Adrian Andrews knew from the beginning that one creative was dead. Was this the one that Edgeworth hummed on? Uh, yes. Okay. Yeah, I think so. Beginning that he was dead. I don't know if we have an objection to this. Like, if we can prove that she didn't know he was dead. You, you can, in a way. Uh... I mean, I'm trying to remember, like, old evidence we used a while ago, like... Yeah, my my hint will be think of all because he's referring to all the things that she changed. Mm -hmm. Think of everything that she changed once she walked in the room. It's the the wine glass. Yeah, the she wine got the glass. guitar case wet. Yeah, I want to think it's like one of those two things. She uh, took the card and she stabbed him in the the button as well. I mean, the wine glass is the thing that, like, was a fuck-up on her part. And also just very fucking weird. Um, we'll try it. Hey, that was it. Yeah, well, it was. <laughs> oh, thank Christ. <laughs> thank you so much for taking the time to testify, Mr. DeKiller. You're welcome. <laughs> what is the meaning of that? Wait, was that sarcasm? When Adrian Andrews entered the victim's room... Your client had no idea that Juan Corita had been murdered. But how oh, how right. do you know that? Da, 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 da. From this wine glass, your honor. The glass? Because she testified that she made the you wine glass because she didn't think he was dead. No, that, excuse me, that was Judge correcting Phoenix. The yeah. wine glass. The glass. <laughs> Mr. DeKiller's supposed client thought Mr. Corita had only fainted which is why this glass of tomato juice was poured for the victim. Hmm. Huh. But isn't that just a part of Adrian Andrews' calculated plan? That is not possible, Your Honor. This glass bears the fingerprints of that person. Had this been planned, they would never have left their fingerprints behind. I see your uh, point. Okay, the angle uh, going Mr. Edgeworth, uh, what is your opinion? Strangely enough, I had the same exact thought just now. Witness, how do you explain this strange phenomenon? It, isn't it a waste of time to ask about such a minor detail? It's not a very important point anyway, correct? I'm afraid you're mistaken. If Adrian Andrews really is your client as you claim, then your client should have had knowledge of Mr. Corita's death. If not, then that can only mean that Adrian Andrews was never your client at all. How strange. Yes. Why is it that the attorney has yet to raise an objection at this absurd situation? <clears throat> Nix, if the killer figures out what we're up to, we're in real trouble. Yeah, I know. Uh, Mr. Edgeworth, I'm surprised. You know you can't say things like that without evidence. Ah, sorry. <laughs> That sounded like an awfully weak objection to me. <laughs> anyway, 
I am positive there was a contradiction in that testimony. The prosecution requests further testimony concerning when the request was taken. Very well. Right now, I have to buy us more time. While we wait for the items together left behind to get here, I just know that the very outcome of this trial lies with those items. I think I think this section is a much it's done much better of like stalling for time. Yeah, yeah. The yes. is, I think is I think the authentic. way this is done. This, yeah, this it, time it looks like Phoenix and Edgeworth are working together. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, and also it feel the stakes are a lot higher. Yeah. Because he's like in the fucking room with yeah, them. Yeah, yeah. This request came to me oh about a week ago. It was a request for my services on the night of the awards ceremony. We met at a certain bar to discuss and finalize a few matters. That is what occurred. I trust my memory, and I believe I have made mistakes. Hmm. So you physically met your client, huh? That is correct. Meeting one's client is the first step to building trust, in my opinion. I see. Well, Mr. Wright, you cross-examination, please. Hmm. I feel like, again, this is just a press everything thing. How many statements total were there? Four, maybe. Uh, there's four. Okay. One week They're ago, are you many. sure? Yes, I am quite sure. I, of course, had my own preparations, and I was barely able to finish. When you request my services, Mr. Attorney, I hope you will keep that in mind. Please. I hire you, dude. Stop. In any case, my client this time had a very specific date and time in mind. A specific date and time? You charge extra for special occasions. <laughs> Did you ask... <laughs> do you do birthday parties? <laughs> but ask... I mean kill someone at a birthday party. <laughs> <laughs> Did you ask why on that specific night? No. Oh, shit. I try to fulfill all the conditions of my client's request. But as for why, I only had my suspicions. Your suspicions, huh? I mean, we're going to press it. So what are these suspicions you had? Why did your client request that night? I'm sure it was all for the bear. I did it all for the bear. Off of the bear. The bear. The bear. The bear. Oh, I love the bear. <laughs> My client spoke of it. I'm sure there will be a bear shaped figurine in one Corita's room. I would like you to retrieve that item for me. You must be talking about this bear puzzle. Inside that figurine was a suicide note. Naturally, the victim brought it with him to his hotel room. He was planning to publicly disclose its contents at the press conference, after all. That is correct. And if I had not done the job that night, I would not have known where the bear figurine was. I see. Well, Mr. Wright, was the testimony just now of any importance? Sure. The testimony just now made one thing clear, and that is... The client knew the secret of the bear figurine. Huh? Why is everyone so quiet? Mr. Wright, I think all of us already knew that. Uh, oh, really? Witness, please continue with your testimony. Okay, well. So you physically met Adrian Andrews, right? Of course I did. What was that? What was with the brief pause? Witness, I would like for you to give us a few more details. 
I always meet my clients as a matter of principle. I have never taken a request by telephone or mail. And why is that? Because I don't really That's... know how to use a telephone. I, d <laughs> <laughs> I only I, use I radios. Have, I, have tel that. I have telephone anxiety. <laughs> <laughs> That's because I value the trust between a client and myself above all else. And the only way to establish that is to speak to the client while looking them in the eye. Hmm. Well, Mr. Wright, was the testimony just now of any importance? Yeah, sure. <laughs> I just keep rolling with it. Of course it was very important, Your Honor. If Mr. the Killer had met his client before the murder, then it's unlikely he's mistaken. What? Hmm. So you're saying that his client really was Adrian Andrews? Uh, um, I guess so. You see, <laughs> it is just as I say. You know what? You guys are being annoying. I'm killing this girl, okay? I'm so lost. Who the heck am I supposed to be helping here? <laughs> Calm down, Phoenix. Think carefully and relax. Me and you then, fucking yeah. called Will the witness please continue? So, your client was Adrian Andrews? Yes, for the thousandth time. Correct. Well, he says the two of them met, but if they did, then there shouldn't be anything wrong with the killer's testimony. Well, there doesn't seem to be anything strange this time around. You have to draw more information from him, but you can't draw his suspicion. If you can do that, you should be able to find a flaw in his testimony somewhere. Talk about a delicate balance. Hmm... I'll give, I'll give you a hint, because it's not obvious. Uh, go back to that last one, or the not the fourth one, but the third one. Yeah, because they were in the, they met in Stay person. Stay, press further, but it's not important. Oh, okay. Interesting. Let it go. No, you press further. No, you and press then further, then say it's not important. Motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's not important. Not important. Why he meets his clients is not important, and that wasn't the point. Witness, please stop sidestepping my questions. What do you mean by that? My question was, did you really meet Adrian Andrews in person? I have already told you, Mr. Wright. I did. It was only through talking with him face to face that I began to trust him. That's when I thought... I can trust this person as a Do you not know Adrian you Andrews fucking is idiot. A girl? <laughs> we got we got it. Hmm. Is his mistake going to be the dumbest one ever? Yeah. Uh, it's true that what they say about talking people face to face. Well, Mr. Wright, was the testimony just now of any importance? Yeah. Uh, yes. If I heard what I think I heard just now, then I think I've got him. Your Honor. I believe the testimony just now was of utmost importance. Huh? Really? If that's the case, goodness, please include the statement just now in your testimony. Very well. Yeah, what the- Can okay. we just present Adrian Andrews' profile? Seems logical to yeah. me. <laughs> Her profile says gender, female, you moron. I'd like to go over you this don't. one more time. You met Adrian Andrews at the bar and took the request at that time. Yes, that is correct. And that's when you thought he was untrustworthy. How many times must I repeat myself? Yes, that is correct. I'm sorry, but that is an impossible tale. What? Shelly DeKiller. You have never met the real Adrian Andrews. Why would you say that? Because you made one very big slip up. About her. So what is the issue? What did you say just now? About her? 
If you had ever met Adrian Andrews in person, one look would have told you that she is a woman. Oh! <laughs> oh order! Order in the court! To the fucking rain now. Yeah, they had to give the radio a breakdown. The witness testified to the following. That he always meets face to face with his clients when taking their request. But he has never met Adrian Andrews in person. Yes, Your Honor. That is exactly the point. That means Mr. DeKiller's client could not have been Miss Adrian Andrews. <laughs> uh, he's sweating green. Oh, he's God. sweating oil. It's the, like, I get that they wanted to do this joke, but they made the oil so fucking big. So weird. Why did they make I... it so big? <laughs> so how much, also, does a radio need that much oil? Also, does a radio Apparently. need any oil? <laughs> <laughs> like... Maybe a little WD-40 to grease the parts, but yeah, I don't think a radio needs oil. <laughs> that, that radio runs on chocolate milk. Yeah. <laughs> My gas-powered radio, dude. Mr. Edgeworth, I understand your logic on this one. However, why would the assassin make such a basic mistake? Because he's a basic-ass bitch. I believe it has to do with her name, Your Honor. Her name? Yes, Adrian Andrews is without a doubt a very androgynous name. Uh, yes, like I see. Unluckily for Mr. DeKiller, the entire time he was on the stand, no one <laughs> has stated Adrian Andrews' gender. And so he simply picked the wrong gender to go with. What? What is going on? Judge, it's really not that hard. Shelly the Killer. This court demands an explanation. Um, I think somehow I must have mixed up this client with another. You know, I kill a lot of people, man. <laughs> just I mean, just I a mountain of dead bodies. <laughs> <laughs> I'm booked. <laughs> so does that mean you remember something different now? Hashtag booked and blessed. Yes, of course. <laughs> Please, if you would, allow me to testify once more. Uh, I know he's just going to spit out more lies. Patui. <laughs> Very well, but this time, please give us the truth and nothing but the truth. So help you, God. So help you, dog. But with that, thank you so much for watching, everybody. Again, we stream this live every Wednesday night at 7.30 p.m. Eastern Time right on twitch.tv slash team. If you like it, you can catch it there or watch the VODs on YouTube. But also, we'd love it if you head over to patreon.com slash team and throw us a buck there as well. We'd really appreciate it. Also, hey, folks, we got some new merch in the pipeline. It's going to be out very soon. Um, but I think that's it. So until next all? time, court is adjourned. Goodbye. Good Good yep, whatever that is. I'm just going to keep holding it until he runs out of breath. That's fine. We can do this all night. Wow, I'm impressed, actually. No. Is this an audio recording? <laughs> No way, it's getting stronger. <laughs> okay, he's dying. I can see the blood in his eyes. There we go. That was amazing. Good night, everybody. Goodbye, everybody.